This is me making my way down to the shops at like 10.30 at night because a couple of people in the Australian Mac community noticed that there was a mechanical keyboard on sale at Kmart uh, which is a discount department store. I think it's struggling in the US but here in Australia it's like top tier stuff. And this is in a video that I planned so it's pretty scuffed and won't be long but I felt like doing this and taking one for the team. I didn't know if they had any in stock, but here they are, three of them, on this pretty sad looking display. I'm actually surprised they got this in stock over other stuff that's missing here. But anyway, it's 39 bucks, which equates to around this many USD, so pretty much as cheap as you can get for a mechanical keyboard. And RIP to this box, it looks like someone wanted to try out the switches and annihilated it. Honestly, I probably could have got this discounted if I asked. But looking at the box, it does look pretty generic. And here is the Anko Full Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Opening up the box, we get our little guide and then the keyboard itself. No wrapping or foam or anything, just pure keyboard. First impressions, it feels undoubtedly cheap, but it is a cheap keyboard, so that's how it is. It's pretty light for a keyboard of this size, coming in at over 800 grams. And there's a bit of flex to it because it is an all plastic construction, which is very rare on a modern mechanical keyboard. Out of all the boards I've checked out on the channel, I think just one other board was like that. And more interestingly, it's actually curved. I can even spin it and there's a bow to it, so the sides are higher than the middle. Not by a whole lot, but you notice it straight away. Plug it in and it lights up in a bunch of colours. It doesn't have actual RGB LEDs, but just this fixed colour ray. But there's a couple of effects and stuff at least. The design itself is very basic and clean. It has a floating key design, so the switches are slightly exposed and the top plate is what the switches are mounted to. And yep, again, this is all made from plastic rather than aluminium or steel and you can really tell. The keycaps though are double shot, so the legends are another piece of plastic and won't fade away, which is pretty nice. But they are thin, and there's just all these little things that make it feel so cheap feeling. So the legends, some are centered, but most seem to be going towards the right. The keycaps are all jagged looking. The lock indicator sticker thing wasn't stuck on straight. Turning the board over, and we have some flip up feet and spots for rubber, but no rubber. A small sticker with a big space. There looks to be attachments for a wrist rest, but that's a fine omission. We have an ISO enter key, which we don't use here in Australia, but not a true ISO layout. But at the end of the day, we do have the good old mechanical key switches. These are unbranded blue switches, and here's how they sound. Super loud keyboard. The blue clicky switches are as you'd expect, just like our Temu Blues, nice and clicky. But with this hollowy thin plastic case, they're even louder. 
And this thing is crazy pingy, adding even more sound to it, so if you're keen on having an ultra loud keyboard, I guess it has something going for it, but the switches, they feel absolutely fine and are great, can't fault them. Now to the stabs, for the most part, they felt and sounded fine besides the right shift. They had little to no rattle, but what legit, like seriously surprised me, was when I took off a cap and saw this. No stabs, like this is a first for me, there's just like these shallow holes and these stem bits just hit it. And even more surprising is it's actually not bad. The bottom out is clean and sharp and of course has no rattle. You can make them rock to each side, but in actual use it's no problem at all. However, on the spacebar and right shift there are wires and the right shift is beyond terrible. Let's open this bad boy up. There's a bunch of Phillips head screws under some caps and one on the other side of the board. Right, so the bottom plastic enclosure is actually fine, it's pretty standard. There's rubing along the bottom surface, and notice that there's no curve. But unfortunately, it uses plastic standoffs, and two of them were already broken from the factory, so the screws were just screwed in too far. And here, we can really see the curve now without the bottom piece. Not sure exactly why it's like this, but again, it's just plastic. Whereas 99% of other mechs have steel or alu mounting plates. And yeah, just more cutbacks. The USB cable is just soldered straight onto the PCB. Usually you'd have a removable connector there, uh, but at least all the solder joints are nice and clean. And that's the Anko Full Mechanical Gaming Keyboard from Kmart. I know that this board won't be applicable for 95% of you, but this is like unseen here in Australia. To have some big discount department store, and that being Kmart selling some mechs like this, where you can actually physically pick it up and bring it home, it's an actual occasion. And amazingly, it's out of stock at a bunch of stores. Too bad that it's straight up the worst mech I've personally tried out. And you know me, I'm all for budget mechs, because of course mechanical keyboards are expensive. And I often believe that if that's what you can afford, then go for it, but with this, yeah. Get something else, like the Kogan mech for the same price, or save like 10 bucks more and you'll get something so much better than this. Straight up no elitist here, it's just that it actually is not a great board, and there's so many other boards out there that are better for the price. For those who actually pick this up, GG, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but hey, it has mechanical key switches, so it is still a mechanical keyboard. I gotta give it to Kmart though, they did for some reason stop this stuff, and I enjoyed my little adventure. 